Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for coming. May I not so please to rise for the singing of the natural anthem.
uh, here and participated in the cultural life of South Florida. It's been a long time and um, I'm now at the age of 92. And thank you very much. It's been a long time and so I'm very honored and I'm very happy to be able to um, um, be honored for my participation, my mother's participation in the development of the cultural life here in South Florida. Having said that, let's forget about the speeches and let's get started with our program. Now, first of all, our first number is a thing called Olympic, um, Olympic Fire. That song was written, that was given to me, the lyrics rather, were given to me by a lawyer uh, who was pretty prominent in Miami Beach. His name was Richard Friedman, and they called him the singing insurgent. He also had a gift for writing lyrics, and he asked me to uh, put music to a song that he had written for the Atlanta Olympics in 1960, 19, I believe it was 1960, 1996, the Atlanta Olympics. We put that, we, we wrote the song, we submitted it, and we didn't win. <laughs> we were up against very heavy competition. The competition was Gloria Estefan and the Miami Sound Machine. <laughs> so you can imagine. So it went, the song went, went into a, in, in, somewhere in, in my house somewhere and it got lost until I decided this year or last year rather to orchestrate it. And uh, this is what we're going to perform for you. This is, get these lyrics. Olympic fire. I've got the beat, I want the gold, I feel the heat. Okay, so let me ask you, now introduce our wonderful singers here tonight, um, our guest artists, first of all, Bill Stafford and Lucia Branch.
in this particular piece. I'd like you to listen to it. It starts with a small sound, with a little theme that comes in, and then more things come in, more instruments in the orchestra come in, and then finally comes to a big statement, and the memory is in focus. And then what happens with memories, you remember certain particular things. I have in here a little jazzy episode. The melody is played a little jazzy. Then it goes and it gets played as a waltz, as a and uh, as a sort of a romantic waltz. And then it goes back to the full theme and it ends that way. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoy my tone poem, Remember When.
course, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so glad you like that. Now we move on to something a little different. Um, let me get my notes together here. Oh boy. <laughs> I put them in the wrong way. <laughs> I lived in New York for 20 years. When I was in New York, I met up with many, many talented youngsters, many talented people. And one of those was a fellow by the name of Jim Reed, who was a very gifted lyricist and writer. And we got together and decided to put together a musical, like so many other people in New York do. Um, and he had a particular story that he liked very much, and it was a, based on the story of Nathaniel Hawthorne. Nathaniel Hawthorne was a New England writer of short stories, and he had one particular sh a story, he called it Feathertop. It was a story of a scarecrow who wants to have a human heart. Nothing more that he wants. He felt his heart can't sing, and he wants to be a human being. And we wrote about six songs. We got into it, and it was a lovely work. We both enjoyed working, and we would have done more of it had it been for the fact I got a job, a paying job, with Robert Goulet and Carol Lawrence doing Carousel in California. So <laughs> I have to, I have to go at the same time. Thank you very much. Hold your applause till the end. <laughs> I, you know, you know, you have to make a living in this business. I was at that time we had Ronick and I had one baby already, and so we uh, decided to sort of uh, stop it for a while and never got back on this whole thing. We wrote about six songs. And there were some lovely songs in there. But we abandoned the project eventually. He got work, I got more work, and so on. And now they were, I put together a medley of three songs that I particularly liked in this medley. It's called Feather Top is the Story. And the opening number is the first day of spring. That's a, just a general all around happy number. The second number is sung by the scarecrow himself, where he tells, he tells the people, he tells himself rather, my heart knows not how to sing. It's a little sad song. And then we have another, and, and it'll be sung uh, by, by Bill uh, um, over here on this side, when, when I bring them out. And then um, the next song is the scarecrow, when he became, had a heart, got a heart, and right away he got a girlfriend, <laughs> and he had a hell of a time. <laughs> what a day, what a time. That's, and that, that will be sung by Marcel. They're both the same scarecrow. This one is, is the old scarecrow, and this one is the new scarecrow. <laughs> and incidentally, the way the story was, the way the story was, would have ended is that he, he was happy to, to become a human being, but when he found out how much trouble human beings had, he decided to go back to be a scarecrow at the end. So uh, <laughs> now it's my pleasure to bring on my singers. Uh, here they are Bill and Alicia, Marcel and Marcella, to sing the score of. Feather I forgot my straw hat, Peter. Oh, that's okay. Who was with that? On the first day of spring, when the first green is seen in the 
The second part is it gets busier. The little girl is now socializing, and she has an early teen, she has young, busy, young excitement. The next stage is, oh boy, that's the late teens. And that's noise, cacophony, and confusion. <laughs> now, <laughs> that's the late teens. You'll hear all this in the music. You'll, if you listen carefully. And then, of course, there's a sad stage which happened been lately to many of us. There's a stage of booze and drugs. And you will hear a wonderful alto sax solo played by Damien Sanchez over there who, um, to, show, to show the feeling of that particular era. And then the next one, wouldn't you know, true love. And that would be done by a trumpet solo by our first trumpet player, um, Dennis Noday. <laughs> I have, you know, owing to my age, I sometimes have a little, you gotta, uh, you know, certain things. Okay, then, you know, like, like, no, like all marriages, there's a little problem, and you'll hear uh, after this beautiful, sweet trumpet solo. You'll hear uh, a little music of confusion, and but eventually they get back together again and live happily ever after. Until death do us part, and there's a part. This is a serious ballet, you know. Um, so you'll hear the same, the old, the theme that you heard first, but very sad and dark. And at the end of the music, uh, the ballet ended the way it started, with a little tinkle. 
the last breath. And I, you know, I just couldn't end with that. It just didn't sound right to me. So I wrote a little part on it, a sort of a resurrection theme, so that you'll know when to applaud. <laughs> okay? Uh, here we go. If I find a place to put this, off we go.
would you follow the different instances in the life of that person? Yes, no. <laughs> in any case, thank you very much for the applause. And now, we're going on to the next one. And the next piece on our program takes me back to the time I served in the United States Army during the Korean War. I was a good soldier. I did what they told me to. It's one thing I hated. Never guard duty. Guard duty was something where you had to stand there for four hours and it was the most boring thing with your wife, with your rifle. So if somebody came, you'd, uh, you'd say, halt, who's there? And then uh, that's all, nobody ever came on my guard duty. <laughs> and I was, uh, most of the time I was so bored. I spent my time humming melodies to myself. And when I got back after four hours of doing this into the barracks, I usually had a song in mind. And there were my pals who were waiting there because they knew I'd come with something. There were some guys that wanted to write lyrics, and they liked to write lyrics. And so we put together, we cobbled together songs. And in those days, you know, that was in the 50s. You know, songs were about love, you know, all kinds of love, required love, unrequited love, you know. It was all about love, love and love. And so these songs, uh, um, I took them back to New York. We, we took them back to New York and we tried to peddle them, but to no avail. We never got anywhere with them and they, like all these other things, they wound up somewhere in a dusty corner of my house. And I decided, I looked, and, and I said to myself, you know, they're, they're not really so bad. <laughs> so, you know, I thought maybe, maybe I'll orchestrate them for my, for my orchestra here, and I, if I can get my, my lovely uh, singers back on stage um, to sing them, where are the Marcells? Oh. Yeah, you know, we don't have proper dressing rooms yet, is it? You know, here they are. Oh, look at that chap. My God. In any case, these are, there are three songs here. One of them is called Crazy Dreamer. It's about a guy who dreamt, you know, that a girl would love to fall in love with him. The second one <clears throat> is called The Hauntingly Beautiful Melody. That's a little bit self-serving, I must say, uh, myself. But it turned out to be a beautiful song, and, 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 and it was really, the hauntingly beautiful melody was the one when the two lovers got together and danced, you know. That, that, so it became hauntingly beautiful. And the third one is, call me and I will follow your voice, and I'll be your slave forever, or something like that. Well, I, our, our singers are right here, and they are ready to go. So let's do my, I call this my romantic memories. So here's your mic. Thank you.
sang with my thoughts alone its curtain call. The spotlight is on you and me. I lose myself in make believe and not my goal. Whirling through a world of fantasy. Just a And filled it with love. 